Hey everybody, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Katie of Embody Daily, and I'm here today with Bruce. Bruce is a husband to um, Jane, who uh, is on the Sinclair Method, and I interviewed Jane a couple weeks back about her experience, and I'll be sure to link that video um, up above here in this video and then also below in the description box. But today I'm here to talk with Bruce um, to hear his perspective as a husband of somebody who has been on the Sinclair Method for alcohol use disorder. So um, Bruce, thank you so much for taking time to speak with me today and share a bit more about your experience. I think this is gonna be really helpful um, for people out there, whether they're on the Sinclair Method or they know someone who is. So thank you so much. Sure, my pleasure. <laughs> Wonderful. So I have a list of questions here for you. I'll just dive right in. Um, my first question really is, um, when did you realize that Jane had a drinking problem or her own um, experience of alcohol use disorder? Uh, I started noticing it around, uh, around late 2017. Mm -hmm. um, there were, we had, since we had been dating, uh, we'd both go out and drink, uh, but we had been living together for a while and there was a period where she was drinking alone and destructively. Um, mm. I didn't know, I didn't really know what was happening. And so it was that I would, let's say, come home from work and she had been in bed all day and I would ask, well, are you not feeling well? And she would not disclose what happened. And I had to find out in a kind of a roundabout way that it was drinking, binge, kind of heavy drinking, secretive. And that was very surprising to me. Um, so that was, that happened in that period of time, let's say 2017, it happened quite a lot. Mm. Uh, and then it got to a point where there was multiple days in a row of that kind of destructive drinking. Um, and that's when it, I, I said that something has to happen. Um, to be honest though, I don't know that it was the drinking that was the problem for me as much as it was the, the not being able to admit to it because I was very worried because I didn't know it was drinking at first. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought she was, God knows what was going on. So um, yeah, that's when I started to really notice it. And I have a question. So I know um, when I spoke with Jane, she talked about her own AA experience. And I know you weren't with her when she was in AA. But were you aware that she had gone through AA and had sobriety and had struggled with alcohol at this point? Yes. Yes. Uh, I was aware of that. Um, I didn't realize the extent of the drinking because most of our drinking together was pretty because i i do drink too um and it's pretty controlled and, and i didn't realize that there was a there was a private side to it interesting I, I didn't i didn't know the extent of it i see that's interesting and you yourself i mean yeah you drink but you've never had any issues with alcohol use disorder is that true yeah i would say that's true so what is that experience like for you to see your partner and somebody you love um, going through, th through something that's so self-destructive that you yourself don't have a personal experience or perspective on? Like, what does that feel like and what's that experience like? Um, it's, it, it stinks, <laughs> for one. Uh, it really hurts. Um, it really hurt for her. Um, even though I don't have that issue with alcoholism, I think that I, I find, uh, or alcohol, I, I have, I can relate to what I somehow understand the issue to be on some level, um, especially, especially finding those days where she just kind of drank the day away. And um, yeah, I, I, I get that there's, there's a lot of stress and anxiety and sometimes you just want to escape. And so it, it's kind of, Somehow I, I frame it that I can, in a way that I can understand, uh, even though I can't fully grasp it. Um, so yeah, there's a desperation to to find a way to make it better. Uh, 
there's a desperation to, like I said earlier, like I was much less bothered by the alcohol part than I was about being dishonest about it because I just wanted to make it clear that uh, I can get, I sympathize and I empathize with alcohol issues. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, don't, you don't have to keep it from me. Please mm -hmm. don't keep it from me. It's much better to tell me about that than to not have me think that, I don't know what, that you're very sick. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, um, yeah, that's basically was my reaction. And so from there, when you first started to discover that it was the alcohol that was causing her to feel ill, did she start to be more open with you about that? Or was she still um, kind of private? Because I know for me, even if people or my husband would say, oh, you can tell me about it, I would still kind of hold it to myself because I was so ashamed. So I'm curious what that was like for you both. It varied. Uh, I, I started to realize that the dishonesty was more when, uh, when she was drunk. Uh, and so I think that in moments of being sober, uh, that I could express the depth of what I was feeling, um, that she could admit, she would admit to it as much as, as, she, as she could. So um, I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> no, it, it uh, does for sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think it's interesting you speak to that, you know, maybe you don't have your own personal experience with alcoholism, but you're human and you have your own experience with, you know, self-destruction or, or what mm -hmm. have you. Um, so it's yeah. interesting that you were able to relate, even though you didn't have that personal experience yourself. That's right. Yeah. So from there, um, you obviously or she learned about TSM and the Sinclair method for alcohol use disorder. Um, what was that experience like as you both began to learn about it or how did that come about? Yeah, um, well, when this period of real self-destruction, kind of heavy drinking of this period of days, it was a, it was a very tense period. And I really kind of said, you, ha you have to find some way to to, to deal with this, mm -hmm. uh, we, we have to find some way, I should say. And I have a very close friend who has gone through the Alcoholics Anonymous route, and actually very successfully. Um, mm -hmm. And so I didn't, I just, that's all I know. I think that's how the world works. Everyone just knows about that. Yeah. And so I said, you know, is that something you do, or meetings, or find a, a psychiatrist, whatever it is, we have to do something. And it really was it wasn't long after that that she discovered uh, naltrexone and, and the Sinclair method. And I think right away we watched the documentary that's on, I think, Netflix or something. And yeah. it was really enlightening. Uh, I thought it was, it sounded, it sounded great because um, to my mind, the very fact that all I know about is Alcoholics Anonymous probably means that and that's ancient history, that there's got to be something better that's been invented over the years, right? Um, we don't uh, uh, fix, <laughs> we don't use whiskey for anesthetic anymore, so there's probably something better than Alcoholics Anonymous. So I, I found that really inspiring. Um, yeah, that was actually my reaction. Uh, it seemed to make a lot of sense. And, and the fact that she was enthusiastic about it uh, and, and, that, and that in talking about quitting, it was always this reaction that I knew that in somehow if I thought that, oh, you have to quit forever, the forever part is what was daunting, not for a month. Oh, I'll quit for a month. That's, well, I could do that. But if I say, no, you really, you cannot drink, that has caused tremendous anxiety. So uh, this was answering that issue. And I thought, wow, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And that, I feel like the, that, I love that you both started with the documentary because that's a great starting place for a lot of people. I did that with my husband as well um, because it does kind of just teach you about this way that many people haven't, um, haven't even heard about or thought about. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, the one little pill documentary that Claudia Christian um, put on just for those listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, was there any reservations you had about it because it still allowed her to drink? Um, was there anything you were feeling or were you kind of sold on the science and the method? What was that like for you? I, I didn't have any problem with that. 
um, I felt like it, it, it felt like it was worth doing. Um, I, since I don't know what the experience is, I don't know what it's like to have that kind of issue with alcohol. Felt like, you know, the, the case made by, by the documentary and, and the fact that it wasn't like it's naltrexone as a brand new invention. Mm -hmm. It's, it was already prescribed to her in a different method, but the Sinclair method kind of used it differently, as I understood. I thought, oh, this, you know, this isn't some, some gimmick or some get rich quick scheme or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, so I thought it was, it was great. Uh, and the fact that it, it made her feel enthusiastic to try, I think was to me was the biggest deal. Yeah. Uh, the most positive. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. That it, and it I took away. Mm. Oh, go ahead. It took away some of the the social fears. The fact that she could still, I and mean, we we live in a place where alcohol is. I mean, most places are like this. Alcohol is a big part of socializing, and so there's a lot of anxiety about going out and being the one person who doesn't drink. Um, so it takes away that issue. That's a very big deal huge bonus it really is yeah. yeah yeah and I know you mentioned she had been prescribed naltrexone earlier and I think she mentions that in our interview as well so I yeah before the Sinclair method she had been on naltrexone but wasn't using it following the Sinclair method so it wasn't having that same effectiveness as it would with the targeted dose in the Sinclair method that's right, mm -hmm. right. so yeah so she gets started on the Sinclair method. Um, is there anything that was challenging for you or for her um, as she was getting started and even um, up to now? I think it's been about a year or more since she started, just over a year, I believe. Um, yeah. So yeah, do you have yeah challenges to speak to? Um, I'm trying to think back. I think that... Uh, I. Th I can't really think of what the challenges have been. I think it's been so remarkable wow. in its changes. I think the biggest challenge would be the planning aspect. So the fact that you, know, you can't just, you have to plan for it. You have to plan to take your medication. Um, I think that's my understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think that, that bothers her very much. Seems to be just fine. Um, uh, I think the challenge has been for me is that hmm, it's sometimes still worrying that it, it could be destructive mm. because there is still drinking and there's a fair amount of drinking still. Um, it's just, it's just very different than it was. It mm. kind of understanding that it's a process uh, that's been a challenge for me. Um, but the biggest deal is that in this year, there's never been a moment where she's, I've come home and found her in bed and she's been there and it's just been this kind of uh, super destructive drink. That has not happened even once. Wow. Um, yeah. That's uh, huge. Close. Yeah. So how, how is she different now from your perspective as her partner who loves her and cares about her and has seen her kind of, at her worst now that she's improving and you say she hasn't had that kind of super destructive experience since getting on the Sinclair method. What is she like now compared to what she's like before? What changes have you seen? Um, there's a lot more energy for other activities. So she's much more, uh, much more active in finding other pursuits that, that inspire her. Um, whether it's writing or, or exercise type activities. So those are, there's just more room for that. Mm. Um, drinking doesn't lead to, the way I, I tend to think about drinking, and I, I, this is the aspect of drinking that I can relate to, is that I always think that, for me at least, that the moment I have my first drink in a day, it means that the rest of my day is pretty much done. <laughs> I'm not going to read. I'm not going to do anything of any value after that. And, and I, I think that that 
I can relate as that as a, as a desire sometimes because I don't want to, sometimes I don't want to deal with my free time as a, like maybe I want to do something creative or I want to do work or I want to learn something, whatever it is, I can kind of throw that responsibility away by having one drink. She's not like that anymore. Um, so having a drink doesn't mean that all the alcohol in the house will be finished. It won't, it might just be a, a glass or two of wine and that's fine. And that still end up reading, still end up uh, doing something creative, whatever it is, um, and that's, it's been fantastic. So that change has been very marked. Um, there are no more hangovers, no more really sloppy mornings. Um, yeah. Uh, alcohol left in the fridge that was so notable from the documentary and it was so accurate it was so it was incredible uh the half bottles of wine left in the fridge the the full cans of beer it's it's wonderful so wow. it's great and that would have never been the experience before it would have Absolutely. been polished off yeah, yeah. wow, wow. Yeah. so you've kind of spoken about you know what's been the benefits of tsm um, are there other things that have been good about the Sinclair method that perhaps surprised you or perhaps you expected, um, but just other, other benefits of this method on, on your relationship, on your partner, on the whole experience? Um, I think one of the benefits is going through it together. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's been really good to it, I think I think it's benefited our relationship a lot that we've kind of so far it's we're going through it together and, and going through it successfully. It's been a, that's a huge thing for us both. Uh, it meant confronting a lot of um, issues and meant developing a, a deeper um, emotional language. I should say if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Definitely. Yeah, and so those have been really big positives. Um, and then I think it's also brought attention to me about some of my behaviors that are not, you know, how I relate to drinking with her. Um, and so, yeah, I think those have been, it's just made us more aware of life stuff. And it's been very positive. That's awesome. <laughs> and so I want to ask you, because I, I you know I interact with a lot of people, partners or people who are, are looking to get on the Sinclair method for themselves. And like you, so many people have this impression that AA is the only way and it needs to be abstinence. Um, and it sounds like once you saw the documentary, you were pretty open to this option. Um, but what might you tell somebody, a friend or whoever, who is in your same shoes and they might be more closed off or more of the mindset that it needs to be abstinence or it needs to be AA or rehab? What might you tell somebody um, now that you know what you do with the Sinclair method? Um, I guess I would just tell them that just like with any other issue, any other health or medical issue, things change and you should always explore new ideas. Um, you don't, just like I joked earlier about, you don't treat illnesses the same way we did 30 years ago. You know, why would we treat alcohol disorder the same way? So just the fact that it's new doesn't, or it's different doesn't, doesn't mean anything. It could easily be better. Just like a lot of things just get better. So yeah, it would be just related to, if you just don't make alcohol disorder as this, this weird black sheep of, of, of medical issues, uh, make it just like everything else. Yeah. And I think a common thing I hear when someone may not be open to the Sinclair method is they see it as an excuse to keep drinking when drinking is causing so much destruction. So what would you say here from your perspective and experience? That it, it takes away that aspect of it. <laughs> it it's, it eliminates the, the destructive, the destruction. Um, so you can kill, keep drinking, but you're just not going to drink like you used to. Uh, that's that already eliminates ninety percent of the problem, I, to, from my perspective, because then you're just a person who can drink a little bit. 
Um, I would say that it's not the cure for everything. So I, I still notice that she has desires and like a nagging pull to get more alcohol, even if she doesn't drink it because of, of the medication, because of the technique. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't cure every other aspect of your life, but it takes away that the binge drinking, the waking up, the, the extreme destruction. I think in her case, at least, it's totally taken it away. So I would say it's not an ex it's, I mean, it's an excuse to maybe keep drinking, but to drink responsibly. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and so I want to hear from you as well. Um, practically, you know, you've spent a little more than a year being a support system to somebody on this method. Do you have tips um, for practically how somebody can support a loved one on this method, be it emotional support, verbal support, actions you can take? Um, what have you seen in your experience that's been supportive toward, toward Jane? Yeah. Um, I think that I felt that I was very happy and it was very clear from the beginning. In fact, <laughs> I can recall a very early thing that happened in that period that I think was very important was that um, we'd had a confrontation about the heavy drinking and I kind of made it clear that I, we, ha we have to do something. And at the time, like I said, I, I thought AA was the way to go. And she said that she would go to an AA meeting, a local one. And this is, this is truly, this is before Naltrex, this is before anything that we knew about. This was really early on. Um, and she told me the night she was going to go and she came home from the meeting and she was drunk. And I understood maybe the next day, it took a little minute because I was really upset um, that you can't make someone go through a process that would be, that causes them that much anxiety. So going to AA meeting for her at that point in time was, felt so terrible that she had to do this experience. She had to get drunk. It was a really bad thing. And, and so I think that the, what I would advise someone is to find the path, the method that makes a person feel comfortable and doesn't cause them so much anxiety and stress to go even just go through the healing process. So uh, the fact that naltrexone in the beginning and then Sinclair method uh, shortly thereafter made her so comfortable and so confident to proceed and relaxed was in itself already huge because it was made her feel committed to, to dealing with the issue. Even if naltrexone, even if Sinclair method didn't work, it was such a positive step forward. So I would say just be, uh, don't push, <laughs> don't push someone into doing something that makes them react like that. I think that was really important. Wow. That's a beautiful lesson and something really valuable to share. Thank you. Sure. Um, yeah, I guess just to begin wrapping up, um, mm -hmm. are there other insights or learnings or things you've, you've experienced and learned this past year that you think might help anybody, whether it's a spouse system on the Sinclair method or someone on the Sinclair method themselves, just from your own wisdom and life experience and what this has all kind of meant to you and to Jane. Um, anything more you would share there? Yeah, uh, I think, I think that if anything, um, it's, this lesson has made me feel more down on alcohol as a, as a thing in general. And it's just, it's, you know, like I said, I have a, a close friend who has, who's recovering and that I, it's such a common issue that people suffer from this drug. And yeah, it just made me really sour on it and, and confront how I use it too, and whether I should even use it, whether it's 
kind of supporting something that's really so destructive to so many people. Um, yeah, it's just made me feel like, think about aspects of life that are so destructive and kind of responsibility, you know, especially wow. seeing a loved one go through it. Yeah. Whether wow. it's, it's beyond drinking, it's also food and drugs and smoking. I used to be a smoker and to think about, well, to put myself in the mind of an industry that makes this stuff and it's just very hurtful. Yeah. Yeah, what responsibility we have for that. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's a fine line between, yeah, enjoying alcohol and then it, it destroying your life, really. It can, it can happen to anybody. Yeah, um, yeah. So has your own drinking... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say one aspect that I definitely... It's brought to light for me is that I, I work in the tech sector mm -hmm. and uh, it's become rather common that there's quite a lot of alcohol around just the office. And so I, you know, there are many hundreds of people working there. And I think, well, statistically, there are probably a lot of people here who have some issues with alcohol. And what a, what a mean thing to do to them to have this around. Um, so it just kind of made me aware of that. Like, this is a, this is, it's a nice drink to have, but it's really destructive. It's really powerful. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's something that also I just think about it more. It just makes me, like, put myself into the mind of somebody who's struggling with it. It's like, oh, man, that must be a really bummer, big bummer to work here. Yeah. I'm tempted all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. And I think that um, it's done that for my husband as well and myself. Like, if I were to go tell, like, you know, 18 year olds or people who hadn't started drinking yet, I just had no idea how addictive alcohol was and what yeah. a dark path it was going to send me down when it was presented to me socially as like lighthearted fun and partying and all of these things. Sure. And what a, what a destructive, risky thing it is. It really is when you're, when you're deciding to, to indulge in it. Yeah. So yeah, has, has your own drinking changed? I mean, I know you didn't have problems with it, but now with that new awareness, has that changed for you or is it more just awareness on it? I, it it's something that I work on. Uh, I mean, I continue to work on just, just doing it less, just, yeah, I, I think about it more um, and I try to drink less, that's all. Um, and Something else just popped into my head. So in your relationship with, with Jane, was she the first person you um, were ever with, like in a relationship who had struggled with alcohol use disorder? Uh, yes, to that extent, to that level of relationship, yes. So it was, it was new territory for you, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh -oh. But I, I've, I've had relationships with people who have had uh, different kinds of uh, issues. So yeah. I, 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 I was, a, yeah, of course, I, everybody has, I guess it's true, but so um, I, it, I didn't find it that big of a deal. Like I said, it was not like, I think that, uh, that there's anything wrong with her or anything f at fault. Uh, it's not her fault at all. Uh, if anything, I just didn't like the line. Yeah. I, I get it. I get you know, there's a machine out there who wants you to drink, just like there's a machine out there that wants you to eat Big Macs. Um, so, of course, you're going to do it. So, yeah. it's not your fault. Yeah, it's a pretty powerful machine, indeed. Yeah, it's a, there's the Oreo machine. I want to eat Oreos all the time. I relate to it more through food. I want to eat <laughs> Oreos all day long, and there's think about them a lot. Uh, so I get it. I yeah. understand. Well, I, I really appreciate hearing your perspective. I feel like you have, you know, the ideal kind of perspective or, or what a lot of people would wish for is kind of an open mind and just loving support. And so I, I appreciate you speaking to that and kind of how you've navigated this alongside Jane. Yeah, I'm really happy to help. I'm, 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 it's really changed so much for us. It's been great. That's, that's amazing. I'm so happy to hear that. And, sure. um, yeah, I just, I want to thank you so much for taking time to, to speak with yeah. me today and share about your experience. Um, 
um, as I said to everybody, I'll link Jane's video as well to this video so that you can hear the interview with her if you haven't yet. Um, and yeah, just just thanks again. Any any final words from you from you, Bruce? Um, uh, I don't think so. I think uh, I just hope that uh, more people learn about this and it helps them out. Yeah, well, this this video will certainly help. So thanks again. Sure. Great. Great to talk All with right. you. Okay. Bye. Bye.